There's the sexy Alicia Silverstone. A spicy stepbrother-stepsister relationship reminds me of all the P-Hub storylines I've seen. This is Popcorn Recap. In this video, we'll be covering a classic, coming-of-age teen comedy film titled Clueless, where we follow a ditzy, popular valley girl with a credit card loaded with daddy's money and her journey through high school, and her eventual realization that she is, indeed, clueless. Cher Horowitz lives a perfectly normal life for a teenager. Entitled and privileged 16-year-old and fashion icon extraordinaire, she uses her computer program to generate herself an outfit for the day. For a self-proclaimed fashionista, you'd think she'd have the ability to put together a coherent outfit without the use of computers, but clearly that'd take too much brain power from this girl. Cher's father, Mel, a litigator, comes down the stairs and is urged by Cher to drink his orange juice, answer his parents' phone calls, and not to sneak out from his office. A scary man in his own right, but the only helicopter parent in this household would be his teenage daughter. Cher's father tells her that her ex-stepbrother Josh is coming for dinner, much to her protest. She drives, albeit very poorly, to her best friend Dion's house, commenting they're only friends because they both know what it's like to have people jealous of their lives. The girls make playful jokes about each other's outfits, with Cher asking her if she's going out with Dr. Seuss and Dion retorting that Cher has skinned a collie for her bag. They go to high school together where Dion complains about the drama she endures with her long-term boyfriend, Murray. Cher asks her why she puts up with it when Dion's boyfriend arrives. Speak of the devil. They argue and Cher makes her leave, wondering why Dion dates high school boys and compares them to dogs, clingy and slobbering all over you. At debate class, her teacher Mr. Hall passes out the students their report cards, reminding them to postpone their suicide attempts until the next day, showing his thoughtfulness. Cher is horrified when she sees her bad grade in debate and tells Dion about it, remarking Mr. Hall is too strict. She returns home to her fabulous mansion-esque home where she passes by a painting of her mother, who died in a routine liposuction while she was still a baby. Now we know where her vanity steps in. After grooming herself in the mirror, as always, she finds Josh in their kitchen, and the two have a playful banter while they fight over the remote for the TV. The two have dinner with Cher's father Mel that night, where he and Josh talk about his goals in life. Cher tries to pipe up to make a rude comment towards Josh, but Mel turns to her saying at least Josh has direction in life and questions her on missing her report card. She quickly brushes it off saying it isn't ready yet and she figures she can renegotiate her marks with her teachers, which is somehow acceptable. An honest and humble family, Josh asks her how she thinks she could possibly get the teachers to change her grade, and she explains she's been doing it every semester. At school, Cher does exactly that. She lies to all her teachers and persuades them to change her grades, save for Mr. Hall who flat out refuses her spacey attempts, telling her her debates are unconvincing and without research. Telling herself she needs to regather her strength, Cher unsurprisingly whisks to the mall where she buys herself new clothes. Because a pretty piece of fabric showing off your midriff will solve all your life's troubles. While shopping with Dion, inspiration strikes, and what bubbles remain of her brain cells, if any, provide her an idea. To hook up lonely and single Mr. Hall with another persistent teacher, Miss Geist. Convinced she is the two teachers' only hope, she crafts a letter to Miss Geist, leaving it and making her think it's from Mr. Hall, and tells Mr. Hall how intelligent Miss Geist thinks he is, setting them up. Meanwhile, finding Cher's three outstanding tickets and realizing she's been driving without adult supervision, Mel punishes Cher and tells her she cannot use the car without an adult. She immediately turns to Josh and forces him to go with her so she can go on a drive. In the car, she asks him what classes he's taking and asks him why he doesn't just buy other people to do things for him. She rolls her eyes when Josh tells her how he actually wants to help people and contribute to things, and she tries to list all her generous acts of kindness, including her ploy with her teachers she's playing matchmaker for. Josh ignores it, knowing they're all only for her own selfish reasons. At school, Cher continues to play evil matchmaker, finding ways to bring the two teachers together without them realizing. As the two slowly grow closer, her marks go up and the teachers slowly loosen up. Cher's father sees her better marks and he hugs her, telling her he couldn't be happier if they were based on real grades. What loving support and a great way to encourage your children to do the right thing. It's no wonder Cher's so selfish. Cher finds herself feeling happy for this and wanting to do more supposed good deeds. A new student named Ty Frazier comes in one day dressed as a relatively average teenage girl, much to the horror of the Beverly Hills space baubles who call her a farmer. Cher, feeling charitable now, befriends Ty and shows her around the school, explaining all the different cliques and idiots and all their roles. Ty asks her which guy's her boyfriend. Dion explains Cher's attitude towards high school boys and how she'd rather date 
date more mature men, foreshadowing. When Ty briefly leaves to grab the mala soda, Dion says she's nice, making you think for a quick second the girls aren't horrible, until Cher squeals in delight over her new project. Ah yes, the best way to make friends, by viewing them as objects for you to manipulate and change to your own will and desire. Fabulous, darling, fabulous! While Ty visits the cafeteria to get the girls a drink, she bumps into Travis Birkenstock, a friendly but clumsy loafer in school, and they connect over stickers and art. When Ty excitedly tells the girls about the cool guy she just hung out with, Cher is disgusted and tells the poor girl not to start off on the wrong foot, and that no respectable woman talks to Travis and his group. Cher and Dion convince her to allow them to give Ty a makeover, which again seems wholesome at first, until Dion remarks it's Cher's only thrill in life that makes her feel in control. Red flags! Red flags everywhere! Josh witnesses Cher and her actions to completely revamp Ty as a typical Beverly Hills dingbat and he scoffs at this and speaks on my behalf. Telling Cher in private he's amazed she's found someone more clueless than her and tells her she's using Ty as her own Barbie doll. Cher protests it's for Ty's own good and that her life will be better because of her. It's a surprise Cher doesn't walk around with an IV drip in her for caffeine constantly. It must be tiring being in denial 24-7. Ty, now completely made over, is excited when she now goes to school turning heads and attempts to hang out with Travis once again. But the girls instead steer her to Elton, the most popular guy in school, who just recently broke up with his girlfriend. She tells Ty she caught Elton checking her out, which is, of course, another lie. The girls attend a Christmas party together, where they know Elton will be attending as well. Cher continues to guide Ty to attract Elton's attention all throughout the party, despite her wanting to be with Travis. Cher is eventually called back home by her father and demonstrates her incredible grades in geography when she tries to get Elton to take Ty with him on the drive home, despite knowing they live in completely different areas. Cher couldn't pour water out of a boot if the instructions were on the heel. And this is all for the good of humanity. Elton drives Cher home instead, and she tries to wheedle Elton to be with Ty instead, but realizes all too late Elton actually isn't interested in Thai food and is really only interested in Cher, the hot gourmet shrimp with the brains of one. He claims he and Ty wouldn't work together due to their social statuses, and he tries to kiss Cher repeatedly despite her saying no. Frustrated, she leaves the car and Elton drives off without her. She tries to call for a cab when she's mugged out in the driveway, whining like a child the entire time. The joyous sound is like styrofoam to my ears. She's forced to call Josh for help, who drives all the way out to Sun Valley to pick her up. Cher breaks the news to Ty the next day and tries to comfort her, but seeing how upset Ty is over Elton, she tries to think of someone new to replace Elton. As if this wasn't her fault in the first place. When a new fashionable and handsome student named Christian arrives, Cher sets her eyes on him as her new victim. I mean, boyfriend. Cher tries a multitude of things to get his attention, sending herself love letters and flowers to prove to Christian how desired she is, because clearly, having to fabricate things to make someone like you is the best way to build relationships. When Christian asks her out during the weekend, he picks her up at her house. Upon seeing her all glammed up in a dress for her outing with Christian, Josh becomes jealous, somehow forgetting Cher is underage and his ex-stepsister. Oh boy. He decides to follow them to the party to watch over Cher. What are you doing, stepbro? Cher and Christian head to a party together where they have fun. They enjoy themselves and Cher is happy to see Josh dance with Ty, thinking he did it to make sure Ty didn't feel left out and not because he was busy watching her like a creep. The party ends and Christian is still eager to dance and hang out with the performing band after hours, so Josh offers to drive the girls home. He and Cher relax after the party together watching cartoons on the couch and she tries to convince him to stay at their place instead of his mother's. He rebuffs this attempt saying he doesn't think she wants a brother type hanging around and Cher, having the intelligence of an uncooked banana, argues he's not. Christian calls Cher back immediately, much to her surprise, and is over the moon when he offers to watch some movies with her alone one night. Netflix and chill. She and Dion set up everything to go perfectly in the hopes she will seduce him, but this fails horribly when Cher burns their dinner and Christian rejects all of her advances, reminding her they're friends. Sulking in the friend zone, she learns the next day from Murray that Christian is actually gay, and becomes even more miserable when Ty starts to rise to a popularity that rivals her own, with everything crumbling down around her. Cher takes personal offense when Josh calls her a brat and is confused as to why she's taken it so personally while taking her driving test, which the genius unsurprisingly fails. She has the surprise of her life when she learns she can't talk her way out of it for once, realizing life in plastic is not always fantastic. Her day doesn't get any better when she comes home to Ty asking for her help in getting Josh and argues with her when Cher decides against it. Guess you could say she doesn't share. Feeling even more distressed, Cher leaves the house, finally concluding that she is, in fact, totally clueless and that she's actually in love with Josh. When your life falls apart and you're the only one to blame, there's only one thing to do to fix it. Lust after your older ex-stepbrother, despite your main way of spending time together being fighting over the remote for your 
her cartoons, just like every typical sibling duo. She confides in her father about her problems. Only partially, of course. Can't reveal your simping after the child of your dad's ex-wife. She admits feeling she doesn't do anything good, but Mel disagrees with her and tells her she's the only one who watches over him and the house, and how she reminds him of her mother in her actions to do good every day. Perhaps a DNA test is in order to make sure her parents aren't related. Cher decides she needs a makeover, but this time, it's spiritual. She turns to her friends to learn from and assists Miss Geist, offering to help donate and take charge for the school's Pismo Beach disaster relief effort. She donates much of her belongings, which catches Josh's attention, and she even agrees to hang out at an event with Travis and support his skateboarding ambitions. Add a girl, Shrimpy! Seeing her change of heart, Cher and Josh eventually follow through on their feelings for one another, which isn't bizarre at all. Ty and Cher make up, and Cher finally decides to stop muddling between Ty and Travis, who are finally able to date. Her friendships with Ty and Dion are strengthened, Mr. Hall and Miss Geist marry with Cher catching the wedding bouquet, and Cher wins back her starry, glitterati life, and the heart of her older former stepbrother. Leonard Skinner, take it away! Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.